my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, we can see that the Lord is good, and His mercy is good for all of the generations. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I was glad when this day I us. Let us go into the house of the Lord. For there's goodness, there's fullness, there's joy in God's house. Come on, y'all. Let's give up my hands and I'm going to pray for bringing us from a mighty long way from seeing the unseen day. The Lord has kept us. Move over your head. The Lord has kept us. We support the health and strength. The Lord has kept us. Clothes on your back. The Lord has kept us. And for that, we ought to give him praise. We ought to give him honor. We ought to give him glory. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise our God. Amen. Amen. As we sing, we did it. A song about this choir. Let's give them some blood as they come.
back to stand. All those who have this name. Good morning, church. Once again, God is so good. I'm just gonna take this little time before prayer. Last Sunday I was in terrible shape. Yeah. I, 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 I was just so miserable. Okay, so bad. I told Pastor, I said, I'm church on a hospital. He said, well, Why don't you go in? I said, No, I'm gonna make it through the day. And God bless me to make it through the day. And do what I had to do. Thank you for it. All right. But my wife had the plans already set up after church what we was going to do. Amen. And it worked out just good. I went into the hospital and I spent a few days. But look at me now. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh-huh. 
It's all right to praise Him. All right. Hallelujah. 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 At this time, we ask that all of us gather and stand again. Turn your hymn books to Selection Hymn 41. Oh, I want to see Him. Selection number 41.
Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor to your left and to your right. Look them dead in the eye. Look at them like they owe you so much. And say, you look good today. Amen. Amen. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Amen. We ask that we will prepare our hearts for to give to the storehouse of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, we have in, we have here the people of the offering will be done by Trustee Ernie Taylor. Uh, offering be lifted up by Brother Green and Brother uh, Brother Green and Brother Hill. Amen. 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 Uh, the congregation congregation is giving, and uh, the ushers are receiving. And the choir is singing. Amen. Amen. She be putting y'all on the spot. Y'all don't even know y'all on the program. I don't know how that is. Oh, Brother Williams and his family, his wife, uh, his anniversary is 
on the sixth. Yes, of, of the, uh, on the sixth. Let's give them some love and prayer. Amen. Thank you. First Chronicles, the fourth chapter, beginning at the first verse. It reads on this wise, the sons of Judah, Perez, Hezron, and Carmi, and Hur, and Shobal, and Rehoah, the son of Shobal, begat Jahath, and Jahath begat Ahumai, Lahat, and Lahat. And these are the families of the Zorotites. And these were the father of Etham, Jezreel, and Ishmael, and Ibash, and the name of their sister was Hezali, Hezel Elponai, and Buniel the father of Gedor, and Hezel the father of Hushai. These are the sons of Hur, the firstborn of Ephratite, the father of Bethlehem. And Asher the father of Tekoa had two wives, Hela and Nehorah. And Nehorah bare him out of whom Zoman, and Zoom, and Hefer, and Tamina. And Her Harahastara, these were the sons of Neharah. And the sons of Hela were Zareth and Jezero and Ethnam. And Cuz begat Adab and Zebubah. And the families Ahahil, the son of Herod. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and Japheth was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Japheth said, because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coat, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, and that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Amen. Thus I read verses 1 through 10 of the fourth chapter of 1 Chronicles. We ask that you bring your heart for God's word on today. We ask that you something to say, some were done, but he has something to draw us closer to the Lord. Amen. Let's give you some hands.
Bless now, anoint afresh. Bless my words and bless my tongue. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Lord, we need honorable men. As I was saying on this past week, I've been real busy at the Hampton Ministers Conference. So the Lord was speaking, me, speaking to me down there in many different ways. Um, through my friends, through the fellowship, through the preach word, through the taught word. And, and I knew we had men's day coming up. And I wanted to uh, get something that would speak to the men. But anytime you see the word man in the Bible, it's talking about man and woman. So women, you're not excluded from this. We need honorable men. Uh, we share uh, in this text today, we need honorable men. I know it's an old cliche uh, from the old days when you use that word honorable, because that can mean a whole lot to a whole lot of different people. But what our community needs now is more honorable men. Men that we can look up to. Yes. Men that we can count on. Yes. Men that we can depend on. Those men that will come through for us. Those men that will make us proud of calling them sons and sons of the Most High. Amen. We need honorable men. That being honorable is not about how much money you have. Being honorable is not about the cars you drive. Being honorable is not about uh, uh, the house you live in. But being honorable is how you treat your family, Amen. how you treat your friends, how you treat your neighbors and your community. Those are the things that count, the characteristics of a man, how you treat others. To be honorable is a characteristic or principle that one must have uh, or, or live by. It's a uh, upright person, if you will. It's a person of high rank or dignity, if you will. A noble or a uh, illustrious person. A person with a distinction. That's what being honorable is. He's worthy of honor and respect. He brings uh, honor and credibility to his name. He is uh, a true worshiper of God. And uh, he, he, you can trust his word. His word is God. So we're talking about honorable men, but we're also talking about honorable women as well. Yeah. A honorable man, an honorable woman is a noble person. That's my first point. Someone that is very noble. An honorable man is a man of prayers. Yes, someone who can pray. An honorable man is a man who can praise God. Those are the three points. Nobility, prayers, and praise. Help me preach this. Lord, we need an honorable man. As in our text today, we find one of uh, uh, the most honorable men in the Bible as far as scriptures. In the Bible, uh, he's from the clan of Judah. Uh, the descendants of Judea. Uh, his name is Jabez. He's born in pain. Let me say that again. He's born in pain. Most women experience pain while giving childbirth, but this mother experienced more pain than usual. She had other children uh, before Jabez, but uh, for some reason, this child brought her more pain than the rest. So in her pain, she named him Jabez. Uh -huh. So he is named out of her pain. Yeah. It means, uh, so she bore him in sorrow. That's what the Bible says. That it could have been a physical pain. It could have been an emotional pain. Mm -hmm. We don't know what type of pain that she was experiencing, but she said she bore him in pain. Mm -hmm. and no matter uh, what she named him out of her pain, mm -hmm. can you imagine being named something uh, that's, uh, that's kind of excruciating? Can you imagine if you look up your name and you find out what it is and it's something that's not looked upon as gladness, but it's frowned upon? Mm -hmm. My mother always told me, all you have is your name. You don't come from a lot of money. We don't have a whole lot, but all you have is your name. So try to protect your name. Amen. But she bore him out of pain. And Jabez, that's what that means. That means, uh, it means, so I bore him in sorrow. It's a painful situation. And let me say, child of God, sometimes the Lord would take our painful situations and make it for his glory. Right. Let me say, God has a, a way of turning our painful situations situations around. God has a way of making our pains into his promise. 
God will use our pain in our life to give him glory. Can I get a witness? Have you ever had a situation where it was a painful situation, but then on the other end of that pain, God got the glory? Right. Maybe it was a sickness, God still got the glory. Maybe it was a loss or something, God still got the glory. Because he can use our painful situations and get the glory out of it. God can get, a, get the glory out of anything and anybody. So Jabez is born out of pain, but he uses his birth interest as a way to make him an honorable man. Amen. First, here it is, an honorable man is a man of nobility. Verse 9, the eighth portion it reads, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. More honorable than his brothers. You heard all the names that Deacon Jernigan was reading, but he was more honorable than them. That there is uh, something special about Jabez. Yeah. He's not like all the other men in the community. He's not definitely like his brothers. Uh, he's not running around cutting the food. He's not running around playing and, and shooting the dozens. But something is special about Jabez. Yeah. Because his mother, even in her painful situation, called him honorable. There's something special about a man that is noble. He carries himself differently than the rest. Uh, no, he's not arrogant. He he knows, but he knows that he is confident. Uh -huh. Sometimes people get uh, confidence mixed up with arrogance. Because if you know you're sure about something, then it's hard for someone to come to you and tell you that something is not what it is. Because you're confident about what you know. Yeah. So he mix it up with you being arrogant. A uh, noble man is a man that's assured of himself. And he's assured of his abilities. He's a wise man. He's a wise thinking man. And if he does not know the answer to something, he knows where to find it. I say he knows where to find it. That's where wisdom come in. Because many times as men, you all know, we'll be driving down the road and your wife will tell you, no, you need to turn right. And you say, no, you need to turn left. No, a wise man will listen to uh, somebody else's voice every now and then. A wise man, who we know we don't know everything, Say man's likes. Amen. Sometimes, oftentimes, we need to uh, have somebody else to speak into our lives, to pray for us, to lift us up whenever we're down. A wise man can take counsel uh, from those people. That's one of the things we talked about. We need people to hold us accountable. Amen. To be a noble is to be distinguished. It distinguishes yourself among the rest. Setting yourself apart, not for arrogance, but because uh, you are a noble person. To exhort a more and mental character. That's what it is. If I can use my sanctified imagination, I believe j set himself apart because he knew the pain he caused his mother. Because every time someone called his name, he was reminded of her pain. Let me say that again. Every time somebody called his name, he was reminded of her pain. Her pain. So this made him determined yeah. to prove everyone uh, incorrect about him. Yeah. That his name is done me a uh, pain for, but his name is a blessed name. Yeah. That, that he proves them wrong. And, and let me say this: there are times in our lives where people have written us off. There's times in our lives that people have said we were going to amount to be anything, but you have to prove them wrong. They said you weren't going to be anything, but you proved them wrong. They said you weren't going to make anything out of yourself, but you proved them wrong. They said that you was going to jail or be in somebody's prison, but you proved them wrong. They said that you was going to struggle all your life, but you proved them wrong. The greatest heat is within you, the heat is within the world. So people are proving them wrong. We thank God for our haters because our haters tend to elevate us. When we have pain and struggle in our life, that's when you get your, your prayer uh, down in your inside, in your belly, because you need to go to God in prayer so he can elevate you over some situations. You are uh, not uh, in pain. Well, you, your name may be pain, but that don't mean that that got to be your title. Yeah. That's what somebody else named you. You are the head and not the tail. Yes, you are royalty. And you are a priesthood. You are blessed. You are blessed in the city. And you yeah. are blessed in the field. Yes, your sons and your daughters are blessed. You belong to the most high. Yes. Your family is blessed. And you are blessed. And your life is blessed. All right. So thank God for blessing you. All right. I said thank God for blessing you. All right. Bless the Lord all my soul and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Right. 
Lord, we need an honorable men. Yes. First, honorable men uh, are noble, but secondly, honorable men know how to pray. Mm. Yeah. They know how to pray. Mm. Jabez had one of the most powerful prayers in the whole Bible. Yeah. Everybody tend to hang their coat on this prayer. Yeah. Many pastors, when they're building something, they will yeah. pray this prayer. Many people, when they need to get more, they are praying this particular prayer, enlarge my territory. Yeah. And sometimes people are talking about the physical space. Right. Uh, but when, I, when we say enlarge my territory, you can be talking about your spiritual space. Right. Where you're asking for the Lord to increase your knowledge in Him. Where you're asking for the Lord to uh, increase your spirit in Him. To give you more power to do His will. Jabez says one of the most powerful prayers in all the Bible. He, uh, he, he knew how to pray. Verse 10, the A portion, it says, Jabez cried out to God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. That Jabez knew who to call on. He knew where his strength came from. He knew that he couldn't do it in his own strength, but he knew who to go to uh, to get strength. And that's a good point right there, that we need yeah. to know who to go to whatever time when we need to be strong. Yeah. We need to go to God in prayer. That's that's right. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Right. Yeah. And yeah. as men, we should know how to pray. Let me say that again. As men, we should know how to pray. Amen. One of the things that I'm charged with as your pastor is to increase us spiritually. Mm -hmm. So if the deacons are always praying, allow me. And the deaconess are always praying aloud. Mm -hmm. That never give anybody else the time to pray aloud. Mm -hmm. So every now and then I may call on someone who's not a deacon, mm -hmm. who's not a preacher, who's not a deaconess for them to pray. Because that's how we increase our prayer life, mm -hmm. by praying to the Lord. When was the last time you prayed? Yeah, I know. When was the last time you really got on your knees and prayed to the Father? All right. I'm not talking about your usual routine of praying, but the time when you said, said man, I really need talk to the Father. I pray to the Lord and we talked about that yesterday. We pray and we talk to the Lord all the time. Some people pray in their cars. Some people pray at home. Some people pray while they're doing uh, in the bathroom. Some people pray uh, at, at school. Some people pray on, on their jobs. But just keep on talking to them. I said just keep on talking to them. And God, we are answering your prayer. You can't be shy about praying. I said, you can't be shy about praying. If I was a pastor, Mike, everybody should have a prayer on their hearts. Man, women, boy, and girl, all of us should be able to pray to our Lord. And because God has blessed us, you have a testimony as well. Right. When you think over your life, how the Lord has blessed you, how the Lord has kept you, right. how the Lord has delivered you, how the Lord has healed you, all you right. have a testimony to share of the goodness Jesus and all he's done for you. Y'all right. have a witness to the Lord has blessed you by your Just have a little talk with Jesus. You hear hear your fingers cry and answer by and by. And that's the prayers of the righteous availing mothers. He prays to God, but it's not just any type of prayer, it's a specific prayer. I say it's not just any type of prayer, but it is a specific prayer. Verse 10, the B portion, it says, let your hands be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. Well, there it is. Evidently, yeah. his name was causing him some pain. So he said, let your hands be upon me so I may be free from pain. Yeah. It's a specific prayer. Yeah. Lord, keep your hands upon me. Have you ever prayed that prayer before? Have you ever prayed the prayer, Lord, keep me from all heart, hurt, harm, and danger? Have you ever prayed the prayer, Lord, Lord, keep my children. Keep your hands upon my children. Let no hurt, harm, nor danger come not them. He knew how to pray. Have you ever prayed like that before? Have you ever asked the Lord to be with you even through your painful situation? Right. If you're in pain, it's one thing to be in pain, but it's another thing to be in pain by yourself. Yeah. But when you have a father that's with you in your pain, right. he will ease your pain. Right. He will bring you out of those pains. That's if what anybody out of any pain is there. Maybe it's what mental pains. Maybe it was emotional pain. Maybe it was physical pain, but the Lord will break you out of your pain. Amen. A honorable man knows how to pray. 
but he knows how to pray a Pacific prayer. He knows how to pray for his family, his community, and his neighbors. He can get a prayer through. It won't just hit the top of this ceiling and just bounce back down, but an honorable man, a, a noble man, a righteous man can get a prayer through. He's a righteous man of God. He's an honorable man of God. He is respected in his community. And you may be thinking about yourself right now, well, I don't know if I'm that honorable. I don't know if that I'm that respectable. I have done some things in my life. I have made some mistakes in my life. That doesn't discount you for being an honorable man. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But thanks be to God for his grace and his mercy. But even if you think that you're not honorable, even if you think that you have missed the mark, and we all have, you still can go to God in prayer. I say you still can fall on your knees and say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know if thou would draw thyself from thee. Tell me, tell me, oh, where would I go? You still can go to God in prayer. So we must be noble. We must be prayerful. But lastly, we must be praiseful. It's a sad sight to not see a man who can't praise God. Okay. I get happy when the sisters stand up, but when the brothers stand up, I get happy because you know you're preaching to them. Because men aren't as emotional as, as women are at times. I'm not throwing any shade on the women, but it's just that we keep things to ourselves. That's one of the things we talked about, how we keep all this anxiety and stuff wrapped up in ourselves and we don't let it go off. So when a man stands up, he is really thanking God. He is really praising God because right. you know, we are very conservative as men. So we ought to be able to praise God in verse 10 and we'll be out here. Verse 10 it says, the C portion, it reads, and God granted his request. Jabez was an honorable man and all Judea uh, among his uh, brothers he was a man of prayer. But God granted him his request. All right. And the devil said in this passage uh, that he celebrated or that he praised God. But if I use my sanctified in imagination, I believe he did. When God has healed you, you want right. to praise him. Right. When God has blessed you, you want to praise him. Right. When God has blessed your family, you want to praise him. Right. When God has blessed your community, you want to praise him. When God has blessed your home, you want to praise him. Right. I will bless the name of the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continue to be in my mouth. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, and his mercy endure through all times. So real men praise the Lord. Real men will honor the Lord. Real men will thank the Lord. Real men will respect the Lord. Real men will bless the Lord. Have you helped anybody in that day? Have you blessed anybody in that day? Have you helped anybody in that day? And give him praise. As I look back over my life and think things over, the Lord has kept us. The Lord has blessed us. The Lord has put his arms around us. Give God the honor. Give Him the praise. Is He worthy? Is He worthy? Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Bless His holy name. I say bless His holy name. Hallelujah. 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 Honorable men, honorable women, are noble. They are prayerful. And they are Praiseful. We thank God for the honorable men, not only just in this church, but all over this land. We thank God for the honorable women as well. We praise and we thank God for answering our prayers. So Lord, oh that you would bless me and enlarge my church. Let your, let your hand be with me and keep me from all harm. So that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. Yes. I have this prayer that's right up under this glass right here. I wrote this some time ago and I put it up here. Uh, I guess we do things out of a, 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 a ritual. In tabernacle. We have the same prayer that's printed. And uh, when you go up there, you see a little card and it has the same prayer. And I saw how the way the Lord has moved. Just over the years of my life. I'm not talking about time of my life. How he's blessed my life. Amen. Having always got it right. 
Still trying to get it right. But God is a keeper. God will keep you from all of in danger. But just incline your ear unto him. God will grant you. He will bless you. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We open up the old church. As the choir is saying, we open up the door of the church. Man, woman, boy, boy, girl, that does not know Jesus and the part of their sin.
give your name honor, praise, and glory to you. Let no hurt come or danger come now. Heavenly Father, enlarge our territory. Right. Not just physically, but enlarge our territory spiritually. We be up here to give your name all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. Elevate your right hand. Now to him who is able to keep us from falling. Present us faultless before the presence of his glory when we see thee joy. To the only wise God, our Savior. 